Hey, this is Gabby. Um, I'm back from my surgery. And Kofi said something interesting that I noticed also. Yeah, I was glowing yesterday. <laughs> It really hurts to cough or sneeze because um, the stitch is up. I think I showed you yesterday. There's this one. <coughs> you said I was glowing, and I think I, I, I was. It was really weird. Like, I was glowing, and I, I'm thinking today, like, little things I appreciated. Like, because I'm moving at such a slow pace, um, like, I'm noticing things a lot more. Um, I'm not, you know, running from thing to thing, thing, multitasking, like I'm really noting each thing that I do, like each mo motion, look how fast I'm walking, this is my, my walking speed. <laughs> so each step I take is like, noted. Um, so I moved the laundry hamper and I thought, okay, I need to get this through the door. And it was like, okay, how, do, how does balance, how does coordination, how does weight bearing, you know, how do all of these very basic aerodynamic uh, uh, concepts fit into my life? And, and how do I appreciate them? And how I was so grateful when it went through the door. I said, oh, it went through, like it got stuck a second. And, and I think that part of maybe what is happening is that when you slow down, when you're injured, when you're sick, when, you're, when you get old um, and maybe immobile, then it helps you focus in more on appreciating what you did in your healthier state in just a mad rush. So I was like petting the cat and checking my, my phone messages and I thought, I want to do both. The cat is on me purring and looking up at me like, you know, this I love you look. And I'm busy half-heartedly half acknowledging him so I can check my messages. So I put the phone down and I just was with the cat and I told him thank you and, and I had this um, really beautiful exchange. There's this woman online and we've become close friends and we're kind of sharing about our lives. And I told her I spent, you know, the first huge chunk of my life hating myself and uh, criticizing myself. And I sent the second you know, big chunk of my life learning to love myself and forgive myself and accept myself. And now, now I'm in this great part of my life that I love myself and I'm learning to appreciate and reflect and observe. And it's so nice to be ripe. It's so refreshing to have less drama, more appreciation, more wisdom, more knowing. It's awesome. Knowing that everything's okay. Knowing that there'll always be enough money. Knowing that there's no need to listen to the pain body and live in drama. Just, just observe it and it passes. Anicca. Knowing that there is light. Knowing that we're connected. Knowing that there's so much more than what we know. Just reading a lot of inspirational things, not from a place of, oh my God, I need this, help me. Who am I? I need to find myself. But from a place of saying, I'm already there. And I want to swim in it and dance in it and throw flower petals in the air and and, and be like Miriam with her tambourine. Uh, so I'm fixing up the house a little bit today, moving slowly, but Ozzy's having a class party here. I know, good timing. We're <laughs> really good at that. It was just postponed like four times and Kobe said we're not going to postpone again. So he's been running around all day. I'm cleaning the kitchen, doing the laundry. And then <coughs> I'm going to lay down and do a pass the parcel. Prepare a pass the parcel activity. And I'm going to show you what my sweet boy did. Also his room is horrendous. And I feel like he doesn't care but I feel like I need to clean it for him. Like his friends are coming over and look at this place. It's a shithole. <laughs> So look what he did, he wants to play um, Pin the Tail on the Donkey. So he made one, look how cute, I wanted to cry. He's so cute. <laughs> I hope that they accept him, because he's so childish and he's so perfect. So here's the horse he made, look. So this is the donkey, and then here's the tail. And you have to try to get the tail on the donkey. Oh my god. 
He's so cute. I love my baby. I just love my baby. So, so Aussie's on a field trip today. Mmm, pizza. To Kirat Shmona. So Lai's on a field trip today to Charushuv. And Daniel's still sleeping. Daniel's not doing well. She's had fever and vomiting <coughs> for the last um, five days. So she's still in bed. Daniel's bat mitzvah is two weeks and a day from today. It means I go to fucking India in three weeks. What the hell? How am I going to go to India in three weeks? I will. I will just be there and we will all deal. Crazy. Just all these great opportunities to grow and learn. You know, the last week I really wanted to go to my spirituality class. I haven't been in four years and I really wanted to go. And uh, Kobe has been working really, really hard. He doesn't balance himself. He does everything. So he, you know, earns all the income practically in the house. And he takes care of all the bureaucracy and all the paperwork and all the pa all the offices and the people we're trying to sue for the, for the the people that lived here and all the damage and the insurance and and he does all the building and all the heavy things around the house and he just wore himself out and Wednesday night he was exhausted and pushing and doing and doing and doing and I was taking my afternoon nap um, after I had spent all day, you know, taking a walk in nature and going to my, uh, I think it was, they go to acupuncture? No, but I, you know, took a nap and I was writing and I was doing things that I like and, you know, I'm just like seriously walking in the fields with butterflies and he's working his ass off. So Wednesday, right before I had to leave, Kobe went to take a nap and the kids are a mess and everyone's freaking out and I thought, I can't go to my spirituality class and I said, if I really want spirituality, it's here in the barracks. It's right here and right now. It's not sitting in a classroom and learning theoretical um, concepts that are, you know, empowering and enlightening, but it's actually sitting here and looking at my life and saying, this is where, this is where I'll become spiritual. Facing this situation, breathing, not becoming a victim, observing, noticing the anger inside of me, the resentment inside of me, um, and learning how to be with the people that I'm closest to without throwing upon them um, unnecessary drama. And it was really powerful. Spirituality class. So I'm gonna go clean. Uh, Arazi and his classmates arrive in two hours. So I, I don't want to push myself too much. I'm not feeling so hot after surgery, but I am glowing. And it kind of takes me back to the beginning of what I was telling you in this video post, in this vlog post, um, is that I, um, I feel really inspired to be healthy, to continue in our path to health. That, I, that I, I truly believe that growing old doesn't mean injury and sickness and falling apart. That it means going more within, being wise, enjoying more, having less drama. And that I need to take care of the container that it's in without fear, without ego, but out of love. And um, I'm joyfully looking at that, at all the things I can do to create a healthier life for me less stressing out, less controlling, letting go, just letting go. Listen to a, um, a lecture from Jack Kornfeld, and he said that the three most powerful questions that a spiritually aware person asks before they die were, did I love fully? Did I live my life to the fullest? And did I learn to let go? Yeah, I could do that. So I want to continue in my journey of health without the stress, without the fear. What if I don't, you know, just, just be and arrive because I already have arrived and be there. So yeah. Any thoughts? Oh, it's getting hard to hold up the camera. Right. Continuing to